I was able to engrave on a jeans without damaging the material at all. Beautiful engraving on acrylic, amazing engraving on brass coins and so much more material with just one single razor. Hey you guys, I'm so excited. Today we'll talk about the comma marker UV laser. This is the Omni one and I know I did do a full in-depth review of this laser so I'm not going to talk to you about the laser itself. I'm not going to give you any specs. Today I want to focus on the materials and the settings, all the parameters for all the testing that I've done. And I'm doing this because in my last video when I took you all around the machine and showed you about it and I showed you some tests and all that, I didn't really give you any of my um, material testing parameters and that's I got tons of comments uh, on that video and everybody was asking what setting did you use for this, what setting did you use for that. So it seems like a lot of you guys purchased this machine and are having trouble figuring out the settings. So today I want to take the time to show you all these materials that I've tested and give you my settings. Now keep in mind that this might not be the best settings. I'm not a professional engra engraver. I don't have an engraving business, but I have tested this and I've done some really nice engraving. I'm going to show it to you and uh, take this as a starting point if you want to use these parameters. So you have something to be based on and then you can change it a little bit from there. Now for those of you guys that never heard of Calm Marker Omni One, this is a UV laser. This is a five watt UV laser. And because it's a UV laser, that means it works on a lower frequency and can mark pretty much any material. And I really mean pretty much any material from clear glass to acrylic, clear acrylic, stone, all the metals, all the plastic, fabric, food, everything you could imagine, this laser can engrave. Now, if you do decide to purchase this laser, please consider using the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link to you. That means to no extra cost to you, I will be earning a small commission. I took lots of notes this time when I tested the machine because the first time I tested, I just kind of played around with it and showed you guys the materials, but I didn't write down any of the parameters and now I did. So I can tell you exactly what I used. Now I do have my handy notebook in here where I wrote all the settings for the materials that I've tested. And before I tell you my testing, you need to know that I have used um, inches per minute. So <laughs> if you go into Lightburn on the top left corner, click on Lightburn and then click on preferences, then you have the option to work with uh, millimeter per seconds or inches per seconds. And there's two columns there. One will tell you it's better for CO2 lasers and fiber lasers and the other one for diode laser. And the inches per minute is fine into diode laser, which is not really recommended for this kind of laser. This is a Galvo style laser, but you know, this is the numbers that I was familiar with from all my other lasers that I've worked with in Lyburn. So that's what I've used. So all my numbers, they're based on inch per minute. So I set my machine into light burn. I set it an inch per minute. And uh, this is the settings that I got. The first engraving I'm going to show you, it is a wood and I did this beautiful engraving. As you can see, really nice, a dark engraving, no charring at all. I did not clean up this wood after it was engraved. This is exactly how it came out from the laser machine. And, um, for the wood engraving, I went with speed 400, frequency 30, um, pulse 1, and line per inch 1200. Now, you saw that wood engraving, also I engraved these little beer bottle openers that, you know, I will put them as gifts for people that purchase stuff from my store. As you can see, the engraving, it is a very, I should move out of the frame so you can focus. It is very, very clean, very crisp, nice engraving and super, super dark. The next engraving, it's leather. And I did this engraving over here. I'm gonna try to cover myself so I'm not in the frame. It's a kitty cat, a really nice, clean engraving, no charring at all, nothing to clean up afterwards. So I did that engraving for leather and then also I did, well, this notebook that I'm holding and I have my notes, I engraved my name over there and then also my logo over here. 
So a very, very nice clean leather engraving. For leather, I use a Speed 500, frequency 30, uh, cupels 20, and line per inches 1200. Then I decided to engrave a photo on this uh, aluminum coated cards. And I just took a photo of myself. There is the photo. Lots of detail, very, very nice engraving. It's a little bit hard to, say, to see it because it's very reflective. And for this, I use Jarvis mode. I use a speed 400, frequency 40, uh, Q pulse one, scan angle 45, and dots per inch 350. Then I use some vector files on these colored ones just to see how it performs. I have a butterfly. I have this little seahorse. I have another seahorse in here. And uh, these ones, let's see. I use speed 3000, frequency 40, pulse one, lines per inch 1200. Next, I engraved this uh, stone coaster. I thought this one ended up so pretty. Um, very, very, very nice engraving. I was very happy with it. It's a lot brighter in person. It's hard to show here because of reflection. I have lots of windows in this room. So for that stone coaster, I use a speed 2000, frequency 40, um, Q pulse one, line per inch 1200. Next, I did a cork coaster. Very, very pleased with the engraving on this one as well. Very, very nicely. And this one, I use speed 2000, frequency 40, uh, pulse one, but line per inches, I went with 600 on this. Brass coins. Now, UV laser, it's amazing on engraving on metal. I was able to engrave these brass coins with an IR laser before, even with my um, uh, X-Tool F1 Ultra, but it was never this dark. This laser engraves super dark and super, super fast. So I was very happy with this. Now you should know if you see this engraving and you think you're going to make those 3D coins, this laser will not gonna give you that depth. It will mark every material. It will be really nice dark engraving like this, but you cannot really um, go deep into the coin. So you're not gonna be able to do those deep engravings. For those, you need a fiber laser. I recommend at least a 60 watt fiber laser. I don't have a fiber laser, so I can't make coins. I have tried it with my X-Tool F1 Ultra, and I was able to make uh, 3D deep coins with those, with that, but it was taking like three hour per coins, and I just made like two coins, and then I gave up. It was taking way too long. But anyway, really beautiful engraving on coins. Um, Come marker, they have some amazing fiber laser um, lasers. <laughs> and uh, if you wanna make coins, I recommend one of those, not this one. Paper. Even though this is such a powerful laser and can engrave on metal and glass and whatever, I was able to just engrave on a piece of paper. And um, let me show you here. This is the engraving it did. Now the engraving was very, very clean. My mistake is that I did another one on the other side. So now you can kind of see it through the paper. So it doesn't look as clean, but the engraving was really fantastic without burning the paper and giving a really, really nice clean engraving. So I don't know why you would engrave on paper. I guess if you do boxes for packaging and stuff, you can do that. For paper, I use a speed 1000, frequency 30, pulse five and lines per inch 850. Then I tried to do something a little bit more fun and I use this um, laser foil my framing was not perfect here, but I did this kitty cat and it did a really, really a good job. So for the laser foil, I use a speed 1500, frequency 40, Q pulse one and lines per inch 1200, plastic. Like I said, this laser can engrave on any plastic. I had this squeegee that I use for my epoxy work um, and I made this engraving here. 
as you can see, very, very nice engraving. So for plastic, I used speed 1000, frequency 40, cupels 15, lines per inches 950. Clear acrylic. Um, this is the one that took me the most testing to do. As you can see, I have all these little squares here that I was changing the settings and trying all kinds of settings. Uh, and in the end, what I landed on for this one over here, you see it's very, very bright, very nice um, white engraving on clear. So for clear acrylic, I ended up with speed 100, frequency 30, cupels 200, and lines per inch 800. Jeans. Um, and my first testing on the jeans, it was this one. As you can see, I was burning through the material. It was not very nice. Then I tried a few more, even one here. And in the end, I ended up with this engraving. And this is very nice. It didn't burn the material. It didn't damage it. It pretty much just removed the color. And I was very, very pleased with it. If we look inside, you can see the material is intact. There is no damage done. So I was very, very impressed with this. So for the jeans, I use a speed 2000, frequency 30, pulse 5, angle 45, lines per inch 300. Another testing I did was glass. And for glass, I didn't have any clear glass around, but I do have this stained glass. I, sometimes I do stained glass work when I have time. And here is, a, I put my logo here. You can kind of see it. It's a little bit fainted and it's hard to show. And then I changed the settings and did this one over here. It's a lot brighter. So I'm gonna tell you the settings for both of those engravings. Um, so speed was 1000, frequency 40, uh, pulse one, lines per inches, the one that is more faded, it's 800, and for one that was brighter, was 1200. So as you can see, this laser is incredibly versatile. You can engrave on so many materials. It is so, so fast and uh, does such a good quality engraving. I cannot recommend it enough. I like it so much that I'm actually going to keep this laser for myself. Usually after I review the lasers, I either give them away or I sell them, but this one, it's here to stay. So you will see more of it in the future. Now, if you do have this laser and you were able to find some better settings for these materials, or if you have tested other materials and you have found the perfect settings for it, I encourage you to put them in the description below so other people can use them and learn from it. I hope this was useful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.